welcome back to the Stealth Recon version 3 uh, build videos. Um, okay, so when I left you before, I was going to go away and do a bit of tidying up and mounting a few bits of electronics. I've got the GPS now mounted on this new um, enlarged tail section that's been really designed around it. You can see there I've got my uh, receiver antennas hanging out the back. I've got the receiver inside the tail. Um, board's all mounted up. Now I've done all the radio calibration and set up on the board. I did act that actually earlier before I mounted it up. But there's one important step we need to do. And that is we have to teach the throttle curve to the ESCs, the speedies. To do that, you get supplied in the kit one of these. It's a four-way um, servo adapter. Okay. So what I've done is I've actually unplugged, I've set everything up. I've gone in and I've set all the channels up on my radio so that I'm getting uh, low stick at 1095, mid stick at 1500, and high stick at 1905 on all channels. All channels are working the right way. All my switches are working the way I want them to work. That's covered in another video on the 2.2 V2.2 setup. Okay, so I've done all that radio stuff. Okay, so I know my radio has all the right settings in it, but now I need to teach the speed controllers those settings. So, I've unplugged the throttle channel from the radio, and I've plugged this lead into the throttle channel on the receiver. Okay, now what I'm going to do, it's a little four-way adapter lead, I'm going to plug all four of the speed controller leads into this adapter. One. This is a critical step. Okay? If you don't get this right, it's never going to fly properly. And it's actually crazily stupid. But it's the sequence that counts. So you get the board set up, you get your radio set up so that the throws of your sticks read correctly on in the in the software on your computer. So now I'm gonna nothing's powered here and turn my radio on. Wait for it to power up. Okay, it's on the right model, etc. etc. Okay? Then I'm gonna take the throttle stick and I'm gonna move it to full and just leave it. Okay? So throttle stick is at full. Then I'm going to take my LiPo battery and I'm going to plug it in. Okay, what I did then, I waited for the tones and I put the throttle stick then down to zero. So now what happens is All four motors are starting at exactly the same amount of throttle and stopping at the same amount of throttle. And they're all at maximum throttle when I'm at maximum on the stick. So they're all running at exactly the same speeds. So just to cover it again, I've turned on my radio, gone to full throttle, plugged in this adapter, Plugged in my, then at full throttle, plugged in my LiPo, waited for the tones, then immediately put the throttle back down to the low position. Waited for the tone, and that's then, by starting at full and, fin and then going to zero, I've taught the range of throttle to this. Now here's another little favourite cheat of mine, just going to sit this on something. Okay, we need to work out what are the correct channels to plug into um, our control board. So, what I'm going to do now is unplug one of these. Work out which one isn't working. It's this one here. Sorry, it's the, this one. It's so this one here isn't working. Okay. So, I'm going to unplug power. I'm going to check with my manual 
which channel that plugs into. Right? So I'm going to check with the instructions which channel that front one plugs into. And that is channel 10. And I'm going to look on the Paris board at the numbering, which is a bit hard to see right now. But, and I'm going to plug it into channel 10 on the board. Great. Now I can unplug another one. Power up. See which motor now isn't running. And it's this one that isn't running. And that is channel 11. So I'm going to power off. Always power off when you're plugging things into and out of the board. And channel 11 is that one there. When you're plugging these servo plugs into the board, make sure you get them on the pins properly. If you get them crooked, or put them on the wrong pin, you can damage the Paris board, and that won't be covered under warranty. Okay, I'm going to unplug another one from my little adapter. Power up. And this one's still running, right, which is channel 3, which means this lead will be channel 9. Okay, so power off, plug this lead into channel 9, and now I can just grab this lead and plug it into channel 3, because I know that's channel 3. So that's my little cheat for how to then wire that up. Okay, so now I can unplug my adapter my learning curve adapter from my receiver. I'll plug those channels back in a bit later. And okay, I'm down to the nitty gritty. Last step I wanna do for now is put the skids on. And that's actually quite simple because you just take your M3x10 bolt, sit the skid over, remember we use the metal blocks on the bottom Set that over that, and these, and you'll put two screws which will go into the outside holes. Now, being metal into metal, you should use Loctite to do these. I don't use Loctite on the skids because I quite often take them off for to make it easier to pack or transport um, my airframes. But ideally, you'd be using um, Loctite at this point in time. Okay, and we just screw on the four skids, and that will be done. I'll come back when I've done that. Okay, so I've got the four skids now screwed on. They're in place, so that is um, the build done. Now, there is some tuning stuff to do. I'm not going to cover in these build videos, but you need to balance your motors. Um, there's a couple of different uh, subscribed method, a couple of different recommended ways to balance your motors. Um, but basically what you want to do, I again use my servo tester uh, to do this. I just plug, unplug one channel at a time, plug it into my servo tester. And what you want to do is um, you place a cable tie around the motor and run it and feel how much vibration you're getting on that arm. You notice at the moment I don't have the props off. The propellers go on as the very, very, very last thing you do after you've tested everything, okay? So anyway, if you want to learn about motor balancing, there's lots of um, videos on the internet. I use uh, a method using an application in my smartphone to actually measure the vibes. I use a, an app called iSeismo, uh, iSeismologer, seismometer, sorry. Um, which is really cool. So um, the other, the next, so you need to balance the four motors. Okay, very important. You will not get good video if you don't balance the motors. And you won't get smooth flight because if the motors are vibrating, the airframe's vibrating, the flight control card 
can't hold the aircraft stable because it's just it literally can't see through the noise of all those um, motors running. The other thing you will need to do is balance your props and again uh, there's lots of videos uh, online about prop balancing so you need to balance your props um, but what I will do is show you how you fit one of the props right top screws off the collet with the, the top washer you're left with this collet ring and the little um, tooth bit that goes in through the bottom of the prop okay and up washer goes on top nut goes on top of that then that whole thing goes over the motor mount over the motor spindle push it down and then start to tighten the nut up whilst holding the prop it's a bit hard to see but what I do is I cup the motor and I'm holding the motor like with these three fingers really tight then hold the, mo the prop and tighten that up and finally I put a driver through that and then really crank that tight okay then you give that a tug and it needs to be really really fit the last thing you want is one of these things coming off in flight now you have two different directions of prop you got that one is spinning one way you've got the other direction spins that way. You need to make sure, remember how we did our motor directions by the chart, you need to make sure you map the prop up to the motor. But we still don't want our props on yet. So we want to do a handmaiden or a bit of testing before we do so. And I've covered this in some other videos, but basically what you want to do is without props on the airframe, power it up with your battery Turn on, your, turn on your radio, power it up with the battery, and make the board run. So get the motors running slowly, and hit your roll stick on your radio, and hear that as you go, say, left, the right motors speed up. As you go right, the left motors speed up. Push the stick forward, the rear motors should speed up. Push the stick backwards, the front motor should speed up. So you should be able to hear it basically doing that without the props on, sitting on the bench. Okay. The very last step you want to do with the motor still running slowly is pick it up, hold a motor directly towards you so it's literally in your face with the motor running, just slow, about 30% throttle is fine, and as that motor is towards you, drop it. Just do a sudden drop and the motor should speed up. You should be able to hear it actually increasing in speed as you do the drop. And then coming back to normal speed as you bring it back up. Move to the next motor, same thing. Next motor, same thing. Next motor, same thing. If they don't sound right doing any of that, you've got the channels not plugged in correctly on the board. Okay? So, then you should be ready to go out and do a test fly. And I might actually do, uh, in a little while, uh, a, a video on what to do, what I do, with a first flight, when I actually do Maiden this, which will probably be sometime tomorrow. So, I've got a few more things I need to tidy up on this. Still got some radio wires to plug in and a few other things. I need to do my Velcro strap through the base plate and put my um, Velcro that's on my pack and on my um, airframe so you've got the velcro holding it on and you've also got the strap holding the battery on you don't want the battery moving in flight so there's a few other things I've got to tidy up but I'll go ahead and do those things and then um, we'll come back uh, with a test flight video thanks for watching